Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and well it was Gold Bar and Swap Meet today so I took a trip, uh, it's not that far from me, it's what about 30 miles um, basically just straight up the East Lanks Road and I'm there um, so I took a uh, trip this morning up to uh, the Gold Bar and BBW West Swap Meet and fantastic event as always, um, lots of interesting stuff there but I was really 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 good I could have come home home with um, quite a few radios today. Um, there was on the BVWS stall. There was some really big 1930s um, radios. Some really nice top end sets. Um, there was one I was so tempted by it. Um, I think it was a uh, Marconi, um, but it was. 10 valve um, motorized tuning on it. I actually have a set that's kind of similar but in a uh, radiogram. Um, but I mean, it was absolutely fantastic, and I think they wanted 10 quid for it. But the problem is, I, I'm running out of space for large radios. Um, big 1930s sets do take a fair bit of space up and I do have quite a number you know either on display or in storage um, getting ready to you know eventually get restored so I, I was I'm just so glad they didn't do a uh, we need to clear all the radios everything's a pound which sometimes they do if they've got a lot that they just don't have storage for um, fortunately they didn't do that or else I would have been stacking my car full of 1930s radios but uh, what did I get? Um, I, only, like I, said, I only actually bought two items, which for me is quite unusual. Um, and neither of them are a radio. Um, first is vintage computer related. Um, just a quick sneak peek out here, which is this here. And the next, we've got a mystery box. This is um, something I think you can describe as new old stock, still in box from probably the very late 60s or early 70s. So uh, we'll have a look what's in the box. So what I'll do anyway, I'll get the camera reset back up and we can have a proper look at what I um, picked up. So I'll say, uh, back in a sec. Right, okay, that's better, isn't it? You can see my um, workbench. And let's, um, let's take a look at the first thing now. Here we go, and what we've got here, I'll stick my I'll stick my anti-static um, strap on just to be uh, on the safe side. What we've got here, this is a um, a Sound Blaster Live, Creative um, Sound Blaster Live, a PCI sound card, a little bit dusty. Um, and I think this was one of the very last um, MS-DOS compatible um, sound cards. Now I actually have, I think I've got one of these. I've either got one of these or I've got um, something very sim a very similar um, PCI, sound, uh, PCI um, creative sound card. Um, I'll have to dig that out, it's in a box upstairs. Um, reason I bought this, really, more than actually the sound card. Yes, it's, it's a handy sound card to have. Um, like I say, because it does have MS-DOS compatibility. It's not the absolute best MS-DOS compatibility. Um, because really these were... I think these came out around like the Win 98 kind of era. So they were more kind of aimed at Windows 98. But they still did have backwards compatibility. Ooh! backwards compatibility with um, MS-DOS because obviously back in the Win98 um, era there was still a hell of a lot of people playing um, MS-DOS games so they still wanted that um, backward compatibility so yeah um, there was that but the reason I actually bought it more than if it had just been that card for what I paid for it I, pro I, I don't know actually I, it was cheap enough that I might have just picked that card up on its own but uh, what, what sweetened the deal was this, which is the um, five and a quarter inch dock um, for the sound card. So basically, it gives you all the outputs um, <coughs> for the back of the sound card on a 
five and a quarter inch um, um, header basically this drops into a five and a quarter inch bay you've got your volume control um, you've got your mic control auxiliary inputs there um, optical inputs um, F SP diff in and out headphones um, microphone input and you've even and um, they're on like PS2 style connectors um, I'd have to make some adapters up uh, but you've even got MIDI in and MIDI out uh, right on the front there the one thing I don't have is the um, remote control which would have gone with this because obviously it's got um, infrared there um, for a remote control now it did used to have one of these I don't think it was exactly this model actually I don't think mine had the um, the MIDI on the front there and I don't think mine ran with a Sound Blaster Live I think it was an earlier sound card yeah I don't think it might have been a 16 or something like that I think it was an ISA um, card the one that I had um, but it's just a really nice useful thing and I actually have a computer in mind for this to go into I've got a um, I picked it up a few years ago for a fiver um, on eBay before the prices went silly and daft on eBay um, it's a um, Intel Pentium 200 MMX um, very similar to what I built um, probably around 98 yeah probably around 1998 uh, that kind of time um, uh, mine was a Cyrex though because I couldn't afford the Intel processor but apart from that it was a very very um, similar system to what I had and uh, this would go brilliantly in that system uh, I really want to make that into you know like a, a later era MS-DOS gaming rig basically um, so you know something to play um, Doom, Quake, uh, well, uh, yeah original Quake, all the Dooms, things like that on it um, I've got more higher end, your know, newer K62s and things like that for um, later um, later games but I think that would be a really nice system for that era of um, gaming I might even have a quite a nice um, video card to go in it um, but like I said, it, at the moment it's just got a really cheap um, generic PCI sound card in it nothing fancy nothing special and nothing with particularly good MS-DOS compatibility so that's the plan for this this will be going in that um, system I will obviously check that it does work but um, the guy said it was in working order and I, I don't really um, disbelieve him so hopefully it should be in nice working order so yeah that's the plan for that that will be going in that um, Pentium 200 MMX rig that I've got but um, that was a fiver. I paid five quid for that, so I thought that was a pretty good deal, to be honest. Um, I'll put that to one side, and we'll get the other thing that I uh, I bought, the mystery box. Ooh, and there is the mystery box. And what we got in the mystery box? We'll open it up. And we have got there's an ACOS um, cartridge, brand new in the box. We've got a rather nice new old stock miniature turntable. Let me get the box out of the way. And this is a bit unusual, this is not a BSR or a Garrard. I think this is Eastern European. We will remove it from its plastic. And that's the other unusual thing with this. It is actually plastic. The whole unit is plastic. We've got a very light tone arm, a spring adjust there so we can set the um, set the tone arm weight on that. We've got our um, locks there for locking the deck down. It's got 78, 45 and 33 speed on it and it's um, I think it's made by Iskra, I-S-K-R-A, Iskra I think it is. 
We even get all the mountings, we've got all the fixings there, brand new in the bag. So those are to go basically underneath the springs. And then we've got two um, little washers and circlips there to actually lock the um, springs down. We'll have a look underneath, yeah. We've got one, two, three springs there, those are what them little plastic cups basically go in and then go into your motorboard. And then we've got one there and one there, those are our um, locks, because obviously we'll use those spring washers and circlips to hold it in position. It appears we've got an auto stop mechanism here, um, so when the arm gets into the centre of the record it shuts the motor off. We've got a rather nice beefy um, induction motor there. It doesn't actually look all sticky and full of grease either, which is quite nice. Um, and it is designed to work at 50 hertz, which is good. 220 volts at 50 hertz. So it's a little bit. This that definitely means this is definitely European, with it being 220 volts. Uh, it shouldn't really matter that much. It should run quite happily on our um, 240 volts, to be honest. Um, if it was something with valves in it, yeah, it's a little bit more of an issue because you're um, basically raising the HT, you're raising, sorry, you're raising the filament voltage on the valves um, by putting 240 volts into a 220 volt transformer. You obviously like your 6.3 volt um, filament voltage will be slightly higher, and you'll basically wear the valves quicker. Um, this is just an induction motor. Um, a extra 20 volts on it aren't really going to matter. I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, that's in that's really, really nice condition. It's got a little bit of... I don't know, I think... That, yeah, if you hold it straight, that runs really, really smooth. A little bit of noise there. It will obviously, um, no doubt, need a service. Like I said, this thing's probably getting on for 50 years old, even though it's brand new. It will obviously have hardened grease in there, although it doesn't look like there's a terrible amount. It does actually look really, really nice. I'm just wondering, Jim. Just, I will have to figure out the windings on that... Um, on the motor there, um, so I wire it up correctly. But yeah, and like I said, I've got a little stop switch on that side there by the look of it to stop the um, stop the turntable when the record gets when the stylus sorry gets into the middle there. So that is super cool. And then let's have a quick look at this. Now we did have a quick look at this, me and Andy, uh, while we was at um, Goldborn, and unfortunately I don't think this is going to be any good. Um, if we open this up. What we've got here is a brand new old stock um, mono cartridge. It's um, an ACOS, that's its little plastic mounting clip which we've got, and we've got the cartridge itself. Now don't worry about all this stuff you can see on it there, that's nothing to worry about, that's just the foam that this would have been packed in in the box, which over the years has basically just deteriorated and turned to mush. Um, that will just clean off, I'll get my paintbrush here and give that a you can see that just all cleans off. And we can do the same on this um, cartridge here. We'll give it a just get rid of all that that foam. There we go. Now unfortunately the problem is, if we look at this, we look at them pins at the back, let me get you zoomed in. If you look at the pins at the back there, you see how corroded they are. So I think this has got damp and basically the moisture has got to it. 
but we will dig out the um, signal tracer and we'll connect it up and we'll see if we've got any um, output on that at all but I, I think it's very unlikely that's going to work but if, if the absolute nothing else we've got a clip we can use if we get another of these cartridges that's got the clip missing and we've got a brand new stylus. Oops. We've got a brand new stylus there. That's never ever been used. So the stylus is worth um, worth having, if nothing else, because it is absolutely brand new. That stylus. It's just a shame. Like I said, it's very unlikely that this actual cartridge is going to. Um, is going to function because of that green that you can see like I said on there we will um, get you zoomed out a little bit and I will grab the uh, signal tracer and we'll connect it up and we'll just see if there is any life in that um, cartridge at all I mean it doesn't matter and to be honest uh, what I've the intention I've got for this deck um, I wouldn't be using that cartridge anyway I'd be using a stereo one so um, that's not going to be there it is I can't see it for looking it's staring me in the face right let's dig this out that to one side right, that's working let's get some and get some test leads out They're not screen, so it's going to buzz a little bit, but it won't matter. Right. So we've got... Right. Connect that up to the cartridge. Oh wow, that still works, in fact, that's a nice hot cartridge, that is a really nice hot cartridge, Right, I, I thought that would be bad with the amount of green that was on there, it must just be a little bit of corrosion on them back pins, because that is absolutely fine. I'm not even on high gain there, I'm just on the normal gain, I'm not even cranked up. There's quite a bit of, there's quite a bit of um, gain on that cartridge. Awesome. So, I mean, in that condition, that cartridge is worth like 15, 20 quid on its own. That is a really good hot cartridge and we've got all the adapter and everything for it there. In fact, we've actually got the specs of the cartridge. If we have a look at the box. And we take the box apart. We actually have there. Let me get you zoomed down on that. See if you can see it a bit better. Let's have a look there. Can you make that out? Let me see if I can get you in a little bit. There we go. So we've got um, an ACOS 101 and it's um, a high output stereo compatible mono cartridge. So we have got a high output and decent high output cartridge there. Um, frequency response 50 hertz to um, 13 um, kilohertz. Now this is the important bit output. We've got 800 millivolts of output so we've nearly got a whole volt of output on there that should be able to drive something like a um, an EL41 or UL41 um, 
ELUL84 are pretty much straight. Um, it won't have a deafening volume or anything, but it will be able to drive a one valve under that. That is absolutely awesome. Well, we've got the full specs of it there. Recommended pressure 5 to 10 grams. Stylus fitted with a sapphire or diamond for micro groove records. It's a stylus for 78s, is obtainable on special order. Um, it looks very much like a TC8 style um, cartridge to be honest. Um, this is the inf this is inf interesting information. It said warning: a worn stylus will damage your valuable records. Change a sapphire after only twenty. It's, this is people don't um, realize this, by the way, um, when they buy the cheap sapphire um, styluses. Um, replace a sapphire after twenty to twenty-five hours of playing. If you've got a diamond tipped one, it's four to five hundred hours of playing before you have to change the um, style. So it's always worth spending that li little extra on a diamond tipped um, stylus rather than um, get a cheap um, sapphire one. But yeah, I am absolutely super, super stoked with that. I was not expecting that cartridge to um, work. I was not expecting that to work at all. Um, that's made that purchase. So I didn't even know it had a cartridge in it until I'd actually got back to the stall with um, see Steve and Andy, and um, realised they actually had the cartridge in the box. And I said, when we had a look at it, we just took it that it was probably dead. And no, it's a good one. Um, this I've got a Japanese radiogram in my cellar, which I've had for years, and I'm not able to do anything with it because Jap Japan used um, 100 volts at 60 hertz for their uh, mains power. Now I can change the transformer in it to get the valve side of it working. The problem has always been 100 volts, 60 hertz turntable, how to get that work. And it was a small miniature turntable like this. This is the perfect replacement for it. So this is probably going to go into that Japanese radiogram that I've um, got. And I will show that on the channel actually because I've never shown that radiogram. And it's something you don't see in Britain. I've never seen another one over here. I've only ever seen them in things that, you know, that have been um, from Japan. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now because my camera is literally about to die. I've not got a single bar left on this battery. And it was just a quick little video to show you the little bits that I picked up from Goldbarn. Oh yeah, price! Um, that in the box and everything, again, I paid a fiver. Just a fiver for it. So that was an awesome, awesome buy. Like I said, anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed having a quick look at the little things that I bought. So I will say thanks for watching and goodbye.